your little rap music that's blowing fine yourself um all your little rock bands you know back then they didn't have music where there was uh instruments and stuff like that it was just praise the lord start clapping your hands stomping your feet and stuff like that um we're bringing it back to the old days you know that's what's missing um we're gonna pray and sin we're gonna be talking about the spiritual bodies and the flesh and blood body and that flesh and blood is not in heaven again this is for the the, uh, this is not for the baby Christians This is not for the medium Christians This is for the advanced Christians uh, Because y'all need to know this There are people that are telling you That flesh and blood is in heaven There are people that are telling you That flesh and blood is God And God had a mother And all these other things that are lies um, So what we're going to do Is go into all the scriptures First we're going to pray first Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for today. Continue to guide us, protect us, watch over us. Keep us away from all evil, Lord. Help us to uh, obey you, Lord. Help us to live holy for you. Uh, Lord, bless us with your Holy Ghost to be able to attain your spirit that dwells in us so that we can overcome sin. Lord, help us to repent for all of our sins. And today we repent for all of our sins. And Lord, we thank you for waking up today, uh, giving us life. Uh, life is not uh, a promise and we know that uh, at any time you can snatch it away so Lord we ask for one more mercy day or more days of mercy for for, for uh, living holy uh, uh, for uh, living life Lord and that we uh, we need your help with everything in our lives Lord uh, we know that we understand that there's going to be trials and tribulations of life Lord so please Lord uh, help us to be strong and more bolder Lord we pray for everything And let the word of God come out through you today Lord and not me In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ we pray Alright so in part one First of all I want to address some couple things Y'all might have seen me in LA uh, uh, couple, A couple couple, couple days in LA And uh, let me tell you something man And I'm seeing this everywhere These kids are out of control and if you don't start whooping your kids, your kids are going to get out of control. In fact, this is something that Jesus talked about in uh, Matthew 24, what, uh, not to have kids at this time. You know, that's what's crazy about it. Because, man, these kids is, 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 is a spirit of the Antichrist in them. In fact, I'm going to start targeting colleges now because they need the word of God because the kids are worse. Can you imagine how bad the kids are right now and how bad their kids will be of those kids? It's going to get awful. Um, but uh, Jesus said in, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 19, And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. If you don't know Matthew 24, it is the end time sermon where God tells you what to look for. And one thing he says, do not have kids at this time. Because they're going to be bad little devils I'm telling you something, something about, um, the, the devil is in these kids And the devil is running Rapping in kids And this is what happened when you take God out of schools And you have ungodly teachers Right at one Teaching kids ungodly things And they are just getting worse and worse uh, I've never seen such evil With kids until I went to California And they have no respect For elders they have no more respect for uh, God. They don't believe in God anymore. They're being taught not to believe in God. 
and they're going, everything they're doing is going against, and they're being brainwashed, these kids. These kids think that, you know, a man can be a woman and a, a, a homosexual is right, and, you know, and love is love and all this other dumb stuff, you know, um, they're being taught. Uh, but we're in the last last days. <coughs> in the last days. And uh, you're going to see me eat a lot of fruit because uh, 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 the time's changing and uh, I'm getting sick. So pray for me. Um. So uh, the kids are getting worse and worse by day. And if you're not raising your kids, if you're raising your kids in public schools, they are going to be corrupt. And they're going to be bad children. So I advise everyone to take your kids out of schools, these public schools. Put them in Christian uh, Christian schools. If you don't have the money for that, uh, uh, raise them at home. Because in these last days, it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And you're just seeing the product of evil. They're condoning abortions everywhere you go, these kids. Uh, they're just so brainwashed of the devil. It's like you can't even talk to them no more. I mean, in their heads, they believe a lot. And, and it talks about how there will be a generation that curses their father and mother and, and a generation of this and a generation of that. In fact, let me go to it real quick. Uh, generation, I almost think I just made it up. And we're living in that generation where it's just getting worse. Um, so uh, the kids are getting worse. The kids that are now in college from uh, first grade are now evil. Evil. There's still some you know good kids out there you know that's being raised by the by the church and is that, but those are dwindling down, and we're in a time where it's going to get worse and worse and worse, y'all. Proverbs chapter thirty. Just think about it. The kids now are so bad they don't believe in God. Eighty-five to ninety percent of them, right? Where the other thing about when they have kids, right? Their kids. It's going to probably be 100% where they don't believe in God. And in fact, when the grandparents get out of here and they have their own kids and they be, and, the, and the kids now that they become grandparents, it's going to be the worst of the worst. So you can tell what time, t type of time we're living in right now. Like it's, we ain't got much time left. Um, and, it's, and, and again, Jesus could come at any time uh, for the church, for the, for the people. So Proverbs, we're going to be in, uh, real quick, let me show you this, the curse of uh, this generation, man. This, it, and God talked about this, and, and it's in the time um, where we're at now. So we're in uh, Proverbs 30, verse 11. There is a generation that curseth their father and doeth not bless their mother. That's these people, man. This is that generation. The, the, the uh, what are they called? The, uh, generation Z or X or whatever it is. Um, there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes. And yet it's not washed from their filthiness, meaning they haven't been baptized. They're so proud. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up, meaning they're proud. They're proud. They're self, they got self-importance. They're taking selfies everywhere you look, right? That's that generation that we're living in now. There is a generation whose teeth are swords and their jaw teeth are knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among the men. Man, this game is... They look down on, on, on rich pe uh, uh, poor people. They, they treat people bad that are elderly. Um, they just treat people. I saw a video today where the kids were whooping a old man. Old man. Punched an old man in his face. Sad. Never would even think about something like that. Punching an old man or, or a woman. And the needy from among men. So, uh, man, let's get into that time. We are in that generation. There is a generation that is proud there's a generation that curses father and mother. And there's a generation whose mouths are swords and their teeth are like knives because their words speak evil. And that generation is what we're living in now, ladies and gentlemen. So, let's get into this. So, we went over there's no such thing as flesh and blood in heaven. Uh, anybody that tells you flesh and blood is in heaven is a liar. Don't listen to anything they say. Come bring them to me and we'll teach them the truth. Uh, we'll try to at least. Uh, but it talked about in Matthew, uh, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 35 and 54. It talks about the difference between a heavenly body, a spiritual body, and a flesh and blood body. The flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Why? It is corrupt. It, it's not, it, it, it's not a, uh, 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 flesh and blood can't enter heaven because it's so sinful. It's sin in it. And it's so uh, uh, dreadful. Um, it's got to go back down to the earth where it belongs, all right? And then 
the spirit returns back to God as we went over in Ecclesiasticus and also how God is not a man and God is a spirit. Um, so make sure that you understand that Jesus is back to his original form, which is a spirit. Now, I want to get more into this. All right. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And if you don't, uh, you didn't get the first part of uh, this, uh, part one of this uh, uh, before on the live. All right, so we're in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8. I mean, 5, verse 1. I want you to listen up. This is going to be some spiritual food right here. Uh, in order to understand this, you're going to have to have the spirit of Christ. So I'm going to break it down as best as I can. If I don't explain it well, man, come see me. We'll figure it out. Uh, we'll explain it in a different way. So we're in 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to start at verse 1. I want you to pay attention because this is going to be very hard to understand. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle was dissolved, we have a building of God and a house not made with hands, eternal into heaven. So first of all, we see that the tabernacle is now the flesh and blood. All right, So God can dwell in this tabernacle, which is the church. So anybody that tells you that, uh, you got to go to a physical church to get the Holy Spirit is a liar. All right. Um, the tabernacle is now the temple, as God says. For we know that our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. We have a building of God. This is the building of God. And a house not made with hands. So not made with his hands. You ain't make this. God made this. Eternal in heavens. All right. God spoke things into existence, ladies and gentlemen. For in this we groan, we cry out. Oh man, this flesh is something, man. It makes you wanna, gives you urges, you wanna uh, 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 kill yourself, gives you depression, gives you uh, uh, wanting to uh, please the flesh, whether it be with alcohol or getting high, or um, they got a ministry out there called the Seven Street Ministries of the Devil uh, with this guy Justin Thane. They going around acting drunk. Uh, taking in devils into their spirit and they're uh, going around laughing and acting a fool like they're drunk yet God said be sober so uh, for in this we groan we cry out earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven so we want that spiritual body God is trying to tell us hey man we groan every day in this flesh but in the spirit we want that spiritual body which is everlasting which is uh, in heaven, you don't have no hurt, pain, and all these other things. Verse 3. If so, be that be clothed, being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle, the body, do groan, being burdened. Not for that with uh not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up in life so we're seeing the mortal body versus the spiritual body here all right uh now he that have worked it us for the self same thing is god who also have given unto us the earnest of his spirit meaning the conviction of the spirit uh the spirit that's why jesus said walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh walking in his spirit so and it convicts you of sin and makes you want to turn from sin and makes you want to live holy for God. And in fact, no man will know how to live holy for God or even know what that means unless they have the Holy Ghost. All right. Uh, so verse six, therefore, we are always confident knowing that while we were at home in the body, we were at we are absent from the Lord. So as long as we're in this flesh and blood body. We're absent from God in heaven. All right. Where for, uh, uh, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present from the Lord. So we earn, we learn, we lean, we learn. We try to get as close as we can to the Lord and get away from that flesh that wants to do fleshly things, which is pleasures of the life. Sinning, alcohol, drinking, smoking, gossiping, lying, stealing, all that stuff that wants that, that, that the flesh wants to do, right? So here you get a distinction between the flesh and the spiritual body, all right? A mortal body, which is going to go back to the grave, <coughs> into an immortality, spiritual body, all right? 
So we're just giving you an understanding of this. Christ being in heaven and in Christ at the same time. Did y'all know that? That Christ, uh, God's spirit was in heaven and in Christ at the same time. Uh, let me show you this. This is John chapter 3, verse 13. Now, let me get this verse 8. Hey, 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 stop. Three, uh, John chapter 3, verse 3, uh, 13. Let me to get this misconstrued and say, oh, this just means that no, no man has ascended up to heaven. That's a lie. Anybody that told you that nobody's in heaven right now doesn't know what they're talking about. Because there's two men that went to a heaven, and his name was Enoch, and his name was Elijah. Went straight to heaven. Now, um, we're going to go into that. All right, because I hear that lie going around too. There's nobody in heaven. Everybody's sleeping. Sleeping means dead, you fool. All right. <laughs> All right. So, many take this first sentence and don't read the rest of it. Right? They say, well, oh, and no man have ascended up to heaven. Well, there was two men that ascended, but they stopped right there. But look what it says. But he that came down from heaven. So, this coming down from heaven not just ascending up into heaven but coming down from heaven there's no man that came down from heaven and then ascended up into heaven so you got to read the whole thing even the son of man which is in heaven so now it, it, now we got three things right here so uh, uh it says that no man have ascended up him but he that came down from say to come jesus came down from heaven to earth which no man has ever done okay and even the Son of Man, which is in heaven, at the same time as he's down, down on earth. And you say, how is that possible, Kurt? Because Jesus is not flesh and blood. Just because his the, uh, God's spirit was in Jesus Christ, doesn't mean that that flesh and blood was God. What lived in Jesus was God. So, and, Jesus, and God is a spirit. He's never been flesh. Never have, never will. And, 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 and because death of flesh and blood has a death. Flesh and blood has a time of death. Flesh and blood has a time of this and that. Uh, it gets old. It has to grow into a baby's womb uh, uh, and, and come out. So, and this is where Muslims are right in a sense when they say, well, how can Jesus be God if he's flesh and blood? Because they know the Old Testament, see? And this is where people get misconstrued. So, and no man have sent it up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, and, he, and even the Son of Man which is in heaven, so God can be in Jesus and in heaven at the same time. One scripture says that, do not I fill up the heavens and the earth? Uh, so this is, uh, when you're trying to think about this logically as a man in flesh, uh, you're not going to understand these things. So you need to think about it in a spiritual sense. We'll say, God said, you know, spirit this, that. You got to, again, none of us are ever been to the spiritual world some of us have you know god taking us out of our bodies and seeing certain things and this and that but we haven't experienced everything when it comes to the next life so we are talking in a sense of understanding how god gave us the little bit that we need to understand right so uh christ being in heaven and christ at this uh on earth at the same time and you got to explain that right uh um, oh, that's interesting, uh, Brandon. Uh, Christ's flesh and blood was not God. We need to understand that and make that very clear. I want to go to 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, because there are people that are telling you flesh and blood is God. That's not correct. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, because one scripture says that God is not a man. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. So this is a mystery. God in the visible spirit of God was manifest, meaning revealed. Uh, that's what manifest means, revealed, appeared, or cleanly, clearly seen. All right? In the flesh, it says. So God was appeared, revealed, clearly seen in the flesh. God in flesh. One scripture said, to it, God was in Christ. The visible spirit of God was in Christ's body, image, and flesh and blood body, uh, reconciling the world unto himself so god took on flesh as the spirit inside of him right it's like we all got a spirit that dwells in us all right 2 corinthians chapter 12 verse 19 gonna say the same thing right 2 corinthians i want to make this very clear so everyone understands this man somebody wanted me to go in agreement with a lie with somebody like that that believed that god had a mother what <laughs> 
Jesus didn't even address her as his mother. Jesus addressed her as woman. Make that very clear. Uh, uh, so 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 19. Make this very clear. Again, think ye that we are excuse ourselves unto you? We speak before God, the invisible spirit, in Christ, in the body, flesh and blood body. But us, but we do all things, dearly beloved, for your edifying God in Christ. Make that very clear. There's a distinction between the two. All right? Uh, because flesh and blood could never be God. And God, Jesus, never pointed to the flesh. Never. Always pointed to what lived and dwelt in him. He do the work. My father do the work. But the Trinitarian say, well, that's two gods right there. That's two people. No. <laughs> it's not two people. It's just in order for a body to, to move or it's got to have a spirit in it. Whether it's a spiritual body or a flesh and blood body. All right. The next life is the spiritual body. And this life is the uh, 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 the flesh and blood body, which has an expiration. All right. Make that very clear. The flesh and blood body has an expiration. The spiritual body does not have an expiration. All right. And this is why I tell y'all that we, uh, we're just passing by in this life. So I wouldn't take this life seriously. Uh, Philippians chapter 3 verse 14. I press toward to the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. In. In. The, the I in. God I in Christ Jesus. All right. Make that very clear. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18. We'll see it again. 1 Thessalonians, oops, yeah, yeah, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. And it says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. This is why Christ is God the Father, because the Father's Spirit lives and dwells in Jesus. He is no longer flesh and blood. That is the title of Son of Man, and that is the title of a Son of God. Right? That's the titles that he was given. He is no longer those things. He is now back to his original state as a spirit. I'm going to show you what Christ turned into a spirit right in front of everyone. As he was flesh and blood to let you know who he really was. Alright. God in Christ. Matter of fact, um, I think another one would be John chapter 17 verse 21. Let's go there real quick. John 17, 21. This is Jesus speaking. That they all may be one as though Father art in me and I in thee. That thou, that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So he said, Father art in me and I in thee. Because Christ is the, the Holy Ghost. Christ is the Spirit of God, right? So, as Jesus said, uh, I and my Father are one. All right. All right, let's keep going. Galatians 3.17. Let's see what else God said. I want to make sure that we understand this. God in Christ. 317. Galatians 317. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ. Before of God, the invisible spirit of God, in Christ, the body and image of God. Alright, the law which was 430 years after cannot dissolve that it shouldn't make the promise of none effect. Alright. So in fact, let's go to John chapter 14. Let's keep, I mean, again, if you're confused on this, I want to make sure that we understand this. Because the word of God will teach us all things we need to know, y'all. John 14. John 14, verse 10 through 13. Believe us not, here's Jesus speaking. Believe us thou not that I am in the Father, in the Father, in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he do the works. 
Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. Truly, truly, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. So, uh, if we believe on him, and we believe that he did these certain things, we can speak in tongues, we can cast out devils, we can uh, uh, heal the sick, we can do all the fruits of the Spirit, right? So, uh, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me or else believe me for the very works sake truly truly I say unto you he that believeth on me the works that I do he shall also the greater works than these shall he do because I go unto the Father and whatsoever you ask in my name Jesus says that will I do that the Father the invisible spirit of God may be glorified in the Son in Jesus. So we go to Jesus. All right. He says, Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. All right. For all them Trinitarians out there that's lying to people, telling them out they, they know this and that, and they don't know nothing. <coughs> Oops. Colossians chapter 1. Let's go there. Again, this was for the experts in the Word of God. They're trying to get. Uh, understanding in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins you know that's talking about Jesus who is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of every creature for by him we are were all things created so by Jesus all things created by the invisible excuse me, by the invisible spirit of God that are in heaven that are in earth visible or invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities us, the spirits who govern or powers or all, all things were created by him and for him and for Jesus and he is before all things Jesus and by Jesus all things consist and he is the head of the body Jesus is the head of the body the church right who is the beginning uh, the firstborn from the dead and that in all things he might have preeminence what does preeminence mean? Meaning, meaning, uh, first in everything, right? Uh, so, uh, Jesus made all, all right? And if you ever get confused with that, uh, John chapter 1, verse 10, and Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9 will tell you that, that Jesus made all things, all right? By the invisible spirit of God that dwells in him. In order to see God, you got to go through Jesus. Jesus says a spirit has not flesh and blood. Let me show you this. So, uh, and this is what Jesus said So you got to go by what Jesus said And that's in Luke chapter 24 Verse 39 This is where he was about to be glorified And he was died And he rose on the third day One of three days he was roaming the earth right? So it says in verse 39 So somebody asked him We'll start at verse 38 Now we'll, you know, we'll, we'll start at verse 37 But they were terrified And affrighted and suppose that they had seen a spirit. We're talking about Jesus. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? And why do your thoughts arise in your hearts? Remember, Jesus is dead. Uh, uh, but he's supposed to rise on the third day. Behold, my hands and my feet, Jesus says, that it, it is I myself handle me and see, for a spirit, for a spirit, have not flesh and blood, as ye have seen, uh, seen me have. So, at that time, he didn't. He didn't. Wasn't glorified. He, he wasn't rose yet to, to, to heaven. So uh, uh, he's yet in his flesh and blood, uh, flesh and bones body still. All right. But then you see and read in uh, 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 verse fifty one, where it says, "And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven." Now, because they don't see flesh and blood that was uh, 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 flesh and blood in heaven. Uh, where they think, well, he wasn't glorified. But no, in order to be rose again, arise again, the flesh and blood goes to the ground and the spirit goes back to the body. Only Jesus' body, flesh, rose on the third day and turned into that spiritual glorified body that he always was and always is. And this is why you talk about where he came down from heaven as a spirit. In order to be in heaven, you have to be a spirit. So the spirit had to come down to flesh and blood body on earth. All right? And at the same time, as flesh and blood body is in, in, on earth, 
Jesus was still in heaven because he's a spirit. All right. Pretty, pretty amazing. This is some uh, uh, deep stuff. Um, so God is not tempted, yet Jesus was tempted. So the flip, what did they tell? They tempted the flesh and blood. Uh, I can show you this in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 17, where God is not tempted. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16. <coughs> you got to make a distinction between the flesh and the spirit. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye have tempted him in Messiah. So you can't tempt the Lord thy God or God going to kill your butt, right? But in Matthew chapter 4, verse 7, the devil did attempt God, but he tempted flesh. He knew that flesh could be tempted, but the spirit of God cannot be tempted, right? Here, uh, verse 7. And he said unto them, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels concerning thee, and their hands shall bear thee up, lest at any time he should dash against a foot against a stone. But look what Jesus said. Jesus said unto him, It is a written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Here is Jesus calling himself God right here. Not flesh. He's right here telling you, I'm God in the, uh, manifested in the flesh. When you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Right? But flesh and blood is not God. You got to understand that. When you say flesh and blood is God, you blaspheme. All right? So, uh, 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 yet the devil tempted Christ. He tempted that flesh and blood. But Christ let him know who you were talking to. You're talking to the Son of God. All right? Uh, Christ was tempted. But was God tempted? No. Flesh was. No flesh and blood was tempted because it is weak. It is weak. Let me show you these certain things where flesh and blood is weak. Hebrews chapter 4. Listen, our flesh can be tempted. All right? But if you got the spirit of Christ in you, them, them temptations ain't going to work on you. Walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It is real, y'all, real. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the filling of our infirmities But was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin So he was tempted that flesh was tempted Yet uh, when it was tempted it was still without sin Because he had the spirit of God working in him uh, But was all points tempted like as we are Yet without sin. Alright. Um, so understand the, the, the distinction between the two. Uh, we can see in Matthew chapter 26. Let me show you this real quick. 26 verse 41. Watch and pray God say. This is for everyone. I want everyone to listen up. Hold on. Let me get some fruit. So I don't die. Okay, see. All right. Matthew 26, 41. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. That ye enter not into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak the flesh is weak when the devil came at Jesus it was at his lowest point it was at his lowest point when uh, he fasted 40 days and he was hungry the flesh was hungry the flesh had to drink the flesh had to eat right so he came at him at the worst time so God said watch and pray that you in when you that you enter not in temptation so pray against temptations from the devil how many people pray today about Turn, uh, uh, not being tempt, uh, tempted by the devil And the spirit is indeed willing But the flesh is weak Alright let's keep going Flesh and blood has a time of death y'all We gotta understand that And if flesh and blood got a time of death God don't die So when you say flesh and blood is God You're saying that God died and make sure that you're very clear on that. We worship Jesus Christ. Only we don't worship that flesh and blood body. We worship what lived in and dwelled in him. 
you say, well, there's people that worshiped him. Yeah, they worshiped what what lived in him, God and Christ. They wasn't worshiping flesh and blood. All right. Jesus grew. God don't grow, y'all. Jesus' flesh and blood have a lineage. He came from the lineage of Judah. That's why he said, uh, there are some say, isn't this Abraham our father? He said, before Abraham was, I am. Who was speaking there? That's God. Right? Um, so before Abraham was even formed, I am. I am God. Who, who are you out to, uh, to attest me? My knowledge. God don't have a lineage or a heritage. All right? From the, uh, There's God and then created all things through Jesus Christ. Right? So, Jesus had a flesh and blood mother which he was born the flesh had a a, a, a a time of born not God God don't have a time of a mother Jesus flesh and blood had to pray right uh, uh, eat drink and live God don't need to eat pray or drink so you got to understand what's going on here God took on flesh flesh has to eat flesh has to sleep Flesh has to do all these things. Flesh had to come through a woman. But he let you know he had no father because God is the father. <laughs> see. Uh, 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 uh. And then you see in Matthew chapter 19 verse 17 as we just went over in Word of God study. He said, why do you call me good? He said, good master. And Jesus said, why do you call me good? There's none good but God. Why? Whoa, whoa. But at the same time he said, I am the good shepherd. So you got to understand what's going on here. He's talking about the flesh. Why are you calling this flesh and blood uh, good? Ain't nothing, nothing good but God. God is a spirit. So uh, uh, we got to understand that. Here's Jesus making a distinction between the two. Listen, don't be given uh, because the scripture says in the Old Testament, God is not a man. So you got to understand where, where what God is saying here. <coughs> Christ actually turned into a spiritual body right in front of everyone as flesh and blood. I had told this to a pastor one time when God revealed this to me, and he told me I was crazy. He said, you're crazy. There's something wrong with you. That's not right. A pastor telling me that. You know, there's so many pastors out there that don't have no knowledge or wisdom or anything spiritual. In fact, some of you baby Christians, and some of you will think you have a couple couple of years and all of a sudden uh, you're pastors now and you're ready to preach and teach God's word when you're not ready you're not ready you got to take time and learn what God is trying to say and you're going to take it's going to be deep diving deep understanding and the only way to be revealed to you is through the spirit so I, my, my suggestion to you take your time before you start preaching and teaching God's word James 3 1 says, Let there not be many masters or teachers, meaning the teachers in this world. Because not everyone is, is, is led by the Spirit. And I don't see too many people that uh that should be preaching that have uh, they don't have the spirit. In fact, I will go as far as say that only five percent of people have the spirit to be able to teach and preach God's word. That's how bad it is. And yet there's 90 there's uh uh, uh, uh women preaching, there's all types of men, these people go going to hell. Because you're teaching something you can't teach or was never taught, never taught by God to teach. And if you ain't taught by God and you're taught by man, you're only going to know man things. And then what happens when you get a question about something that you don't understand? Or you don't, uh, you don't know how to explain? Or you can't even come with your own revelation? Then what? You're going to have to go to your pastor and try to look for the sermon. Uh, does he got a sermon on this? Oh, he don't got a sermon on that. What am I going to do now? You know? What, what am I going to do now? I ain't got no sermon to tell me what. what You're going to have to explain it. And if you ain't got the spirit of Christ to explain what God is trying to tell us here. And you are teaching and it's a lie. You're in big trouble. This is not a, 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 a one of them jobs to play with. You may play with your other job and take a little five minute break here and then, you know, all the other stuff. This is a 24-7 job. And it's a job only for the strong and bold and those that have the spirit of Christ. I see many people out there trying to teach. I th that's fine. You want to do that? You want to <laughs> risk your life and stuff like that? Man, let me tell you something. Before I started uh, even saying anything about God's word 
it was almost 10 years of, uh, uh, of just learning, learning, learning. Then I started to talk, then I started to talk about it after I learned. I didn't learn it from a man. I want you to get that very clear. My teachings don't come from a man. Nobody's taught me this. All right. I had men tell me this and I say, well, wait, the spirit telling me that. I'm not going with what you're saying. In fact, I had many mentors were growing up and this, that, you know, asking questions and stuff like that. And then I come to realize they don't know what the hell they're talking about. There are people that tell me baptism doesn't save and that the spiritual gifts are gone and, and that uh, 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 when you had questions or hard questions, they don't know, they don't get back to you. You know, I mean, real, real hard questions. Like, uh... It says that the, the cross curses, you know, and, and it's like, well, wait a minute. Uh, well, it's, I, I need I need to learn that from the spirit and not from no man. So there's many people that try to, you know, ask questions, see what they think and this and that. But, man, let me tell you something. It's just like with this. They go with these, uh, uh, what the what these uh, commentary people say. Don't go with no commentary. That's where you go wrong every single time. Never go with commentary. Go with God led you to, to, to believe in and not just read over it, but ask God to help you with it, to help you understand it. Uh, I had a man today that asked me, why do I write in my word of God? And why do I circle things? And why do I analyze things? It's because so I can remember what to say next time I see it. Or when I go to that verse, say, hey, because well, I can't remember all this. This is a lot of, but this is, uh, I'm looking at it right now. What is this, over uh, uh, 1,700 pages? You're supposed to remember 1,700 pages and uh, and then every verse. Hey, stop, man. Stop. How many times you going to keep doing that? See, I'm talking to my dog. He's sitting there uh, itching himself all the time. Um, he just steady long doing this for an hour. I'm thinking, how many times can you itch yourself? Um, uh, back to what we're talking about. So let's go to uh, where... where uh, with the spiritual uh, spiritual body. Let me show you what Jesus turned into a spiritual. So, uh, and the man tried to tell me that's not what happened here. So, that's the only reason why I brought this up. So, we have Matthew chapter 9 and verse 1. And I said unto them, Truly I say unto you that there, sh uh, there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste death. There's some people that's going to stand here and not taste death. All right? Till they have seen the kingdom of God with power. Verse 2. And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John and leadeth them up into a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. Now, what does transfigured mean? Transfigured means to turn into a spiritual state right in front of them. In his raiment, his clothes became shining, exceedingly white as snow. So as no fool on earth could white them. So it is a white that has never been seen before. A white, a cleanness that ain't never seen. All right? And it lines up with revelations. And there appeared unto them Elias and, and with Moses. So Elijah and Moses were there. All right? <coughs> Elijah said Moses right there Elijah Moses was dead y'all So uh, And they were talking with Jesus So there is people in heaven And Peter answered and said to Jesus Master is it good for us to be here And let us make three tabernacles Meaning churches That's what they did back then Peter was always holding on to the Old Testament Could never get let loose of that Because he was Jew One for three and one for Moses and one for Elijah. For wist not what to say. For we have not knowledge what to say. For they were so afraid. Why were they so afraid? Because they're seeing a spirit right in front of them. Here's Jesus turning right into a spirit. And not only that. Which shall. Uh, it says. Some won't even taste death. Alright. So. We can show you the instance where Jesus walked on water and they were so scared. You know what? He turned into a spiritual state again. Turned into the Holy Spirit. God is a spirit. Um, so. Now. 
let me show you where there were people that were transferred into heaven. We're going to be in the book of Joshua, chapter 3. In fact, we're going to start at verse 23 and 24. Again, this is the meat of the scriptures. Joshua chapter 3, verse 23 and 24. Some of y'all heard of Enoch. When you say, I can even go to the book of Enoch. No, all you got to do is go to the book of Joshua. It talks all about uh, Enoch and what happened with him. And it talks about what happened with the 10,000 saints and everything like that. So, and some... And sometime after, when the kings and princes and the sons of men were speaking to Enoch, and Enoch was teaching them the ways of God, behold, an angel of the Lord then called on the Enoch from heaven and wished to bring him up to heaven to make him reign there over the sons of God as he had reigned over the sons of men upon the earth. So they needed him in heaven. Hey, we, you got to go. We need you over here to teach the men. 24. When at the time Enoch heard this, he went and assembled all the inhabitants of the earth and taught them wisdom and knowledge and gave them divine instructions so he gave them divine instructions and he said unto them I have required to ascend to heaven therefore do not know the day of my going so here is a promise that God is going to be bringing him into heaven now where do we go to see this at we go to verse 36 and 38 Joshua chapter 3, verse 36 and 38. And when the kings returned, they caused their censors to be taken in order to know the number of remaining men that went with Enoch. And it was upon the seventh day that Enoch ascended into heaven in a whirlwind with horses and chariots of fire. And on the eighth day, all the kings that had been with Enoch sent, <coughs> sent to bring him back uh, the number of men that were with Enoch in that place that were ascended into heaven. And all the kings went into the place and they found the earth, uh, but real quick, uh, in the place which, from which he ascended into heaven. So here he is, and then they talks about how they went down. Uh, matter of fact, let's read it. Verse 38. And all the kings went to the place and they found the earth there filled with snow, and upon the snow were large stones of snow. And one said to the other, Come, let us break through the snow and see. Perhaps the men that remaineth with Enoch are dead. And now under the stones of snow, and they searched, but could it not find him, for he had ascended into heaven. Well, you say, Kurt, that's that's Jasher. You know, Jasher's not in the Word of God. Yeah, that's a lie. It talks about in Samuel, the Book of Jasher, and, and uh, also Joshua talks about the Book of Jasher. So, uh, in fact, I have read the Book of Jasher, and it lines up greatly with the two. In fact, it it uh uh. <coughs> it completes Genesis and it completes Exodus that's missing parts that y'all don't even know alright so I suggest everyone give you say well that's Jasher that's not the real word of God well in 2 Kings chapter 1 I'm sorry 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 1 uh, it talks about how Elijah was ascended up into heaven in the same way as it was in the day of Enoch and it came to pass, so we're in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1. <coughs> and it came to pass, when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Galatia. I always call it Elisha. I don't know why I call it that, but it's, a, it's Elijah just in another way. Uh, from G uh, Gilagah. Gilagah. So we go to verse 11 and 12, right? Let's read that. We're in 2 Kings chapter 2 verse uh, 1 Now we're going to go to verse 11 And it came to pass So when God says something It always comes to pass As they went out on and talked with that Behold there appeared a chariot of fire And a horses of fire And parted them both asunder away And Elijah went up by a whirlwind Into heaven And Elijah saw it And he cried My father, my father The chariot of Israel And the horsemen thereof and he saw him no more, and he took hold of their clothes and rent them in two pieces. I mean, he was upset. Um, so here is Elijah transfigured, uh, 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 um, sent, uh, ascended up into heaven, into his glorified body right in front of you. So anybody tell you that uh, nobody's in heaven right now? That's so foolish. 
I'm not saying there's nobody in hell right now. Yet people been to hell and heaven. They seen people. That don't make no sense. So these people uh, are lost. Whoever's telling you that uh, they're reading the scriptures wrong. In fact, come, uh, um, um, let, 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 let me deal with it. You know what I'm saying? Let, let, just take them to these scriptures that they deny it. Listen, just keep moving on, man. You, you ain't need, I mean, it's silly things to be arguing about. If they're not salvation issues, don't be arguing with people. All right, believe what you want to believe. You want to keep eat, you don't want to eat pork. That's fine. You don't want you don't want to do this and that. That's fine. You want to keep wearing uh, 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 satchels and all the other stuff. That's fine. Do what you want to do. You know I ain't gonna sit here and argue with you about it. Uh, but when they saying divorce and remarriage is right, that's when you time to go to war. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's a salvation. How many people you told that to? You know. So. Anybody that tells you that flesh and, uh, uh, that uh, nobody's in heaven is a lie. Flesh and blood is not in heaven. Spiritual body and, fle and flesh and blood bodies are different. All right. I want to show you this too. I want to show you where Jesus was made a little lower than the angels. I bet you many can't even understand that scripture. You know, that's what's so sad, man. They, you know, these are teachers, right? You expect the teachers to know these certain things, but they don't. They don't even know how to explain these things. They're so prideful and you can't tell them nothing either. They, they know it all and when they get, uh, when they're wrong or something, they want to fight you, you know? <laughs> so we're going to be in uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 7 and 9. All right. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 7 and 9. Thou made him a little lower than the angel. So what you say? How you make Jesus a little lower than the angel? Because he was flesh and blood. The body was prepared for him. Hey man, I ain't going to tell you again. Hey, hey, hey. I'm going to lock you up. Stop. Stop. You are driving me nuts. Stop. Love you. Thou made him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor. So he was made a little lower than angels. Hey, Jesus made a little lower than that. Yeah, that flesh and blood body was lower than angels. Uh, because angels are spirits. And him glorify and honor. It did set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet as God in, the, in, in that flesh and blood body. For in that he put all subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet... Hey, all things put under him. Verse 9. But we see, now is that the only thing what you talking about? No, but we see Jesus who made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. So now you get to see why he was made lower than the angels. But we see Jesus who was made a little, because the angels worked for Jesus. Jesus made the angels. Made him in his image, right? Man, uh, 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 the image and body of, of, uh, of the spirit. So um, so they have the appearance of, of, of Jesus, which is a man face. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. So we see why he was made it. Crowned with glory and honor that he may be the grace of God should taste death for every man. All right for every man so for that god manifested appeared in the flesh uh revealed in the flesh seen in the flesh all right so that we can know who god was and who god is is god that flesh and blood body no the flesh and blood body is gone it's back to his spiritual state um and understand that flesh and blood has a time of expiration uh that's why jesus said it is Finish. He fulfilled all the prophecies of the Old Testament that spoke about him. He said, it is finished. And he gave up what? The ghost. And when he came, uh, the ghost was gone, he came, uh, uh, came back to him, right? And uh, rose him on that third day. So here's Jesus wandering around, preaching to the prisons and stuff like, and, and spirits and everything around the area, right? And, uh, 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 
and then rose on the third day and he rose into his original state which was the spiritual body and then rose and was put back on the throne and uh, uh, as the, the sacrifice the lamb of God all right um, and we need to understand that Jesus Christ is the only God there's no other God that in this world uh, uh, whether you call him God or you call him God the Father it's still the same thing listen Jesus addressed us as sons and daughters and if Jesus addressed us as son and daughters he is God why what lived in him was God the Father so uh, your body is going to turn into a different body a glorified excuse me, a glorified spiritual body. All right? And that glorified spiritual body is everlasting. Whether it's everlasting in hell or that it's everlasting in uh, in heaven. So, but the glorified body is the one that's going to be in heaven. It's going to be bigger. It's going to be uh, uh, no pain, no hurt, no none of that stuff. Uh, you're not going to have the same fleshly desires as you had on there where you want to sin and this, that. It's also not going to have uh, wanting to get married with a woman or a man, all right? It's going to be like the angels are because the angels are not married. So uh, understand that the next life of the spiritual spiritual body is a glorified, uh, more awesome body than there is. Um, mortal bodies are, uh, <coughs> flesh and blood bodies are not our real bodies. These are the temple of God that God has gave us to live and dwell in. That's why it's so articulate when it comes to uh, many uh, amazing things in the body that that is together, whether it be the heart, the lungs, and all this other stuff. You know, arteries, and, you know, blood vessels, and stuff like blood moving and left and right. How it goes through the heart, and through everything else. You know, through the brain. You know, stuff like that. I have brains and it's sophisticated. Um, so. Never mind this world. Never mind this flesh and blood body. Live to please God in the spirit. And if we walk in the spirit, which is the spirit of God, we shall not fulfill our lust of the flesh that is holding us back from God. So praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Continue to uh, read in your word of God as the times get worse and worse every day. For the time is coming when they will not be able to even pray to God or even come to God. And we're getting closer and closer to that day. So it's very important to repent for your sins, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, and then live holy. Inherit that spirit of Christ so that you can live holy for God. Because God is coming for a blameless and spotless church. He ain't coming back for sinners. He's coming to destroy sinners. He's coming back for saints. Paul addressed the church as saints, not sinners. Love you all. God bless in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ.